all our work would, would have been face to face as most people would have been pre pandemic. Um, so we had to adapt uh, all our programs to online delivery where possible, as we all would have done, no, no doubt. Um, and really what I find in the community relations area was that we had to figure out how to connect communities and connect people together through good relations work and, and the concept of the name of the program sort of fell out of those conversations. Um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to offer a good relations football education program. So generally what we try to do in the Irish FA is we say football is for all and we try to use football as a hook for uh, opportunities for lifelong participation within our sport. Um, what we realise through community relations is, is that not everybody is always in love with football, um, but what we can do is offer various pathways for people within the game. So that could be media training, that could be refereeing, that could be coaching, that could be returning to play um, and, and offering opportunities throughout that. But that's where the football education side of the Connect programme came in. So what we did, we piloted the programme uh, with uh, various communities based around our central offices, which are at the National Football Stadium at Windsor Park. Um, we brought together um, some people from uh, the market area of Belfast. We brought together some people from Donegal Pass area. Um, and we brought together a variety of uh, others from the BME community, which meant that we had a large representation uh, of across the city and across the, all communities. Um, and this is the program, the pilot program that Tony uh, began on. The program ran for eight weeks. Um, it offered a different module each week, as I've already said, ranging from refereeing pathways into coach education, disability training, mental health, anti-sectarianism, racism awareness, volunteering, and also finished with a, a virtual stadium tour of, of the Windsor Park and the National Football Stadium um, and the Heritage Centre. So really we're trying to give us holistic uh, a feel for the work we do on the ground daily pre-pandemic, during uh, pandemic and on a digital platform. Um, and we felt it worked really well. Uh, the group from week one, and, and Tony will highlight this, came together, really got on well. Um, so successfully that we decided to, to continue to work with these guys um, in uh, ambassadorial roles, some of which you'll see both uh, Tony speaking about those opportunities and also in video at the end. Um, but what we really thought was the most positive aspect of the whole programme was uh, to see that we were bringing communities together. We were continuing good relations work. We were continuing to trigger challenging and difficult conversations through a pandemic or in a pandemic uh, through an online platform, uh, which really, really excited us. And I, I, I would not be the first or last to admit that that was new to me. Um, and certainly it is something that we will utilize going forwards, as I'm sure everybody on the call uh, has done and will continue to do. So the, the idea of the blended delivery will, will certainly come into effect with Connect. Um, as you can see there, it was just about doing something more than, than on the ground work. We were very limited in our on the ground, on the ground work. We were out door to door, but that was about it. And our contact with communities, we've built up strong community bases and relationships, both around the stadium, as you can see from the photos there. Uh, the right-hand side photo was uh, a summer drop of fruit and veg and meat to uh, the local uh, most isolated and at-risk residents around the stadium. And the picture on the left was at Christmas where we uh, dropped in a full three-course Christmas dinner alongside isolation packs during the winter months to support those communities in relationship with uh, the amalgamation of supporters clubs and local community groups, Greater Village Regeneration Trust. So we're very lucky to have those relationships and we didn't want to lose them, both set Belfast Central and also out in the greater community across Northern Ireland. So this is this online delivery has given us an opportunity now to, to increase our, our geographical outreach, if, if really, because prior to this, if I went to Korean, that was my day taken up, um, whereas now we can have multiple and we've delivered multiple programs of, of Connect on, on, on any single day. As you can see there, that's just some of the partners we have worked with. Uh, football clubs, Crusaders, Portadown, both ran 
academy programs. Um, the Portland program had 43 on it. The Crusaders program nearly double that at 76. Um, and both those programs, those clubs came and reached out to me because, uh, in reaction to issues that had happened online or in group chats during the pandemic. So we were able to give some education around issues that were happening, even uh, when people weren't together. And we all know the power, negative and positive, of social media. Um, MSC and I uh, are a great partner of ours. And have, uh, we're right there from the very start of the Connect program. Harmony um, was actually a program that reached out through our all-female program. Um, and that uh, was a, a homeless ho- men's homeless hostel program we reached out to um, and delivered a four-week program, pilot program with them. And I'll speak more about the future with them in a moment. Alternatives Restorative Justice have been super, and again, a partner from the outset with MSCNA. Um, and PSNA, um, most importantly, and Andrew George, who's currently the uh, president of the Black Police Association. Um, really, really super uh, partner of ours who has delivered um, multiple programs in support of the Racism Awareness Program um, and will actually be there supporting us in our kickoff at three event this Sunday at New Forge. Uh, and New Forge have been a super partner. Only this week, as part of Good Relations Week last night, we delivered a, an Everybody's Game module uh, in New Forge in their indoor facility. So they're strong partners. Scott Street Youth and Commun- Community Centre. Uh, we ran a program with those guys, um, which we were super. Um, and then Meg in the future, uh, we linked in with a summer program to which I'll, I'll support with a video in a moment. Um, the all female promote program, really strong. We opened up applications. We wound up with 36 successful applicants coming on our all female program. What you're seeing there is screenshots of not only the, the participants in the program, but also some of the guest speakers. I think it's really important to highlight that we had female specific guest speakers. So the top right photo, you can see uh, the girl just beside the girl with the pink hair uh, is Suzanne Hamilton, who's a pediatrist. And she spoke specifically on female foot health in football. Uh, and uh, same posted the words football boots and stuff. Demi Vance at the bottom, female international. Lauren O'Malley, who's now come on board as one of our Connect module deliverers. Um, and she uh, is an inspirational lady who I wouldn't even begin to start uh, trying to tell her story. But if anybody would like a quick Google tonight for inspiration, Lauren O'Malley is the way to go. But we had young ladies from the age of 16 right through to retirement age in this programme. Uh, all come together from across Northern Ireland. And the success of that uh, seven-week program is that we now perform a monthly program as well. Um, So we really are trying to branch out and hit as many areas of the community, uh, uh, both geographically and across age and gender um, and background as possible. So we feel we've got, in a short period of time, we've been really successful in our outreach. It's a really good way of getting people to engage with serious issues. So um, we always mix it up a bit, you know, with the likes of having the talks on the first day is one way of engaging them, but we find that sometimes that doesn't stay with the, with the participants. Um, but then we use digital technology to kind of help that engage with them and, and help those messages kind of sink in. Working with uh, the Making the Future project, we uh, have come together with a, a concept that is to bring young people from all different races and, and religions together to uh, do an intense summer program to really uh, discover about inclusion in football and diversity within the game. So we've came together to um, to engage with some really uh, strong themes of racism, sexism, inclusion in sport and sectarianism. Um, and we've been responding to them with a group of young people creating augmented reality and virtual reality experiences where the kids have got the chance to have their voice and have their say on the issues that we've explored. Hi, my name is Lauren. I'm Sam. came from Sandy Row and I take part in everybody's game and love to hear everybody's stories. Hi, I'm Laurie. I'm 15 years old and I play for a team called MSCNA. It's a very, football is a very fun sport and I really enjoy it and playing with other people that I've never seen before. And today, this week, we've learned about filmmaking, how we make templates on canvas and learning how to use the green screen, green screens up as well. What, what the guys from Making the Future in there are bringing to, to these young people, augmented reality, virtual reality, green screens, digital platforms, it's just, you know, opportunities that not everybody's getting at the minute. Um, and I think coming out of the pandemic, 
to offer a summer program where we can invite people in uh, and it's in this setting and it's through football which they all enjoy but it's adding that the digital platform to it is has really engaged them um, and, and it is really exciting for both them and, and us as, as coordinators. We've had a lot of fun this week and it's been great crack and the kids have all left with a uh, Lessons that will, will stay with them and, and last with them. And they've all got a free hoodie and a, and a free Google Cardboard headset too. And we've been getting fed every day. So all around, it's been a brilliant experience. Uh, and it's just all about giving young people that platform to get mutual understanding, to learn with each other and from each other, uh, and to really use football as that hook to give people lifelong opportunities and positive pathways together. What we also then, the success of the first programme, we have uh, secured some of the guys that come on board as ambassadors for the program um, with the concept that they can not only be representative of Connect program, but also of the RHFA and the foundation as a whole through a variety of programs. Um, but, but definitely they are Connect ambassadors. They're, they're being trained up in how to deliver our modules and they're going to support Connect delivery. Um, and I'm now going to hand you over very quickly to Tony, who can give you a quick overview on that. Well, I mean, I'd just like to start by saying thanks very much to Chris and all the tireless work that he's done, uh, I suppose, connecting the communities and even make myself part of it. So, um, yeah, guys, my name's Tony Dorian and I'm from South Belfast and I'm from the Market area, which um, I suppose a lot of people would know it's a, a prominent Republican area. And, having the opportunity to, to be an ambassador and I suppose all the, all those really, really important issues that Chris has already covered off in regards to disability in sport, mental health, especially after coming back off the back of the lockdown. Um, it's the sectarianism and racism, two major factors which I think are in every corner of the world. It's It gives me a real, real sense of pride and I suppose really proud to say that I'm an ambassador and the big, big idea is, is for a brighter future ahead for our young people and the grassroots level and I suppose some of the young people that we're seeing in the last video really amazing to see and I think that's getting right in and having the integration and uh, I suppose the shared spaces for all the young people is, is definitely something that the Connect program is a real adv advocate for and every time I, I sort of took part in the course I went and did didn't actually really think too much of it was just doing a course and came on to this this sort of a zoom call it's probably like we are and I just finished work and I got to meet people who were living just 200, 300 yards away from the front door. We had so much more in common than, than you can imagine. And, and from then, we created friendships and some very similar to what the kids have done through the same process, meeting up at the stadium, really, really fantastic um, relationships from that. And the opportunities for myself, uh, again, just again, being able to promote the grassroots level and, and all the really important factors, but also being part of the Hope United Cup and getting to bring the kids to the Super Cup, which I think we will all agree was a, a massive factor um, for the entire city and I suppose the country in, in a whole and bringing the kids there and seeing some of their faces. And I think I'll, I'll be wrong to say it, my face probably wasn't as bright as theirs. It was an amazing opportunity, but overall the Connect program for myself as a whole is, has been a bit of a, a bright, bright spark for me and, after coming off the back of lockdown, we all have our, our day to day jobs, but this is something that gave me, I suppose, that wee bit of conviction and that wee bit between my teeth to go and represent the IFA and I'll also represent my area um, as an ambassador for the market and, I suppose, uh, the Connect program as a whole. I'm going to just zoom quickly and play one last video, if you don't mind, which we'll close off. It's from the, the Connect uh, pilot scheme that, that Tony was on. Um, just to say the future, we've got really strong relationships coming forward. We've got a massive program starting with pb and We've got BT Sport on board as a, as a, a media partner to support uh, their Hope Not Hate campaign with Through the Connect program. Um, and we've now got a variety of 10 different modules for any group, whether that be clubs, community groups, schools, anything at all. Anybody wants to get in touch with me around the Connect program, yeah, please do. My details will be available at the end and also through any contact at all. Um, but we've now, we can now develop bespoke programs rather than just a set module of four to six. Uh, we've got over 10 options now. My name's Tony Dorian. I'm from South Belfast. I uh, live in the market area. I uh, represent Real Dunham Camoiga, which is an Irish speaker football club in South Belfast. My name is Thomas McCabra, also known as Tupper. I'm from Donegal Pass in South Belfast. I'm Victor Alcoya. I'm 17 years old and I'm originally from Nigeria but I grew up here my whole life. Well, my background is being a Protestant. It's my loyalist area where I'm from in South Belfast, Donegal Pass. Uh, I'm also in my loyalist flute band. 
So growing up, you sort of have a different look on the insight of where you came from. So you always believed in what you believed in. But now going through the course, sort of getting to know new people, and now I become a friend of a fellow who lives probably about 100 yards away from me. From the interface right over my doorstep, I'd have been a different person when I was younger at that interface. But I say going through the course, growing up a lot, and coming to the age where I'm coming at now, that the people I, I know from there and from other backgrounds, I'd say, yeah, it gives me a complete different look at them and a complete different look at other people's religion. Sectarianism in, in football really doesn't have a place at all and after doing the course uh, it just opens your eyes up and sectarianism can be a big word in football but an even bigger word is anti-sectarianism. So for me it definitely hit home and great to reach out and sort of get to know different people from different backgrounds which always opens your eyes up even more. Race is the main challenge. Um, of course as a family who just came from Nigeria, mom and dad challenging for them to settle down, get jobs, like support three kids on the road. It was hard to get used to because coming from Nigeria, everyone's like you, no one's different. So come to a new country, you can tell already you're on the odd one out. I love this country as well. So to hear stuff like go back to your own country like you're not wanted here is, it is quite hurtful to hear. The Connect program, the good thing about it is that we talk on a lot of issues from disability awareness to racism awareness to, we actually did a refereeing course as well. Um, we talked about the Catholic and Protestant divide in Northern Ireland, which is quite big. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been great to hear all the people's like, viewpoints and not just your own and come together, interact. So the first bit we did with the Connect group was around disability and sport. And one of the first questions that Chris asked me was, what sports can you do with a disability? And when I was sitting there, I sort of had to think about it. And I don't know why I had to think about it, because my neighbour actually played for the MPT Northern Ireland team. Um, for me, I'd sort of hit home that you can actually play sport with any disability. And by the end of the session, we, we covered off loads of different disabilities. The Connect group sort of was able to further my knowledge on football. We'd done a refereeing course. We started off with disability in football. And we sort of touched on many different diverse subjects, which for me, opens your eyes up into football and makes you realise that it is more than just a game. It's nice to finally meet people who you never even knew, who's so close to home, but they're on a different religion from you, maybe a different belief. And it's been amazing to meet these type of people. They'll probably go on now, go on to be friends now for a long time, hopefully, and that'd be a true, true nice thing to happen. After my first session, I was like, wow, I love this, and I just, yeah, kept going each week and I enjoyed it thoroughly. <laughs>